noblest of mankind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I'm assuming that uh, we have refused to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it's in English so maybe it sounds better when you say you wanna be be May the peace and blessings of Allah be on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his household companions, and the generality of Muslims. Inshallah, quickly we will be moving to the next session, and this session, of course, is self-descriptive that it will be in the English language. Inshallah, and uh, to that extent, I would like to introduce uh, the speakers and the chairman of this session. Uh, permit me to order that protocol this way such that I introduce the panelists and then conclude with the chairman of the session, whose citation I will briefly read. Uh, members of uh, the panels who will be making presentation during this session include uh, uh, Fadila Tushik, Professor Ibrahim Olatunde Yusuf. Professor Ibrahim is already on the high table. Oh, he's not here. And then Dr. Raji Abdul Latif. Is Dr. Raji Abdul Latif already on the ITU? Are we still expecting? Oh, okay. How about Professor Ibrahim? Professor Ibrahim Yusuf. Yes, Osman. Osman, not Yusuf. Professor Ibrahim Osman, not Yusuf. Query that computer. So, Professor Ibrahim Malatunde Osman. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And then, Sheikh Komaruddin Ulushola Bilu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, the chairman for this session is no other than a uh, very dear Sheikh. Uh, an icon for Islam, uh, Fadila to Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ahmad, the National Chief Missioner of Ansaruddin uh, Association of Nigeria. But just so, even though Sheikh Abdul Rahman is like uh, the moon or the sun, it's almost impossible for anybody who lives under the sun not to have uh, recognized him or not to know him. But even at that, permit me to say that uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Ahmad was born in Niloni to the family of Sheikh Ahmad Tijani Zubair. He started his education on the lap of his mother, Mashallah Sayyida Habiba, who taught him to read how to read and write. Sheikh's mother taught him to read and write the Quran. He later went to Darul Ulum and Madrasa to Shabab al Islam in Isale Kutu and Asuna Asunara Asunara. He studied, <laughs> he studied Arabic, Fiqh, Hadith, and Syro under a number of learning scholars at home. He started formal, education, formal Western education much later at the age of 14. He went to government secondary school in Lori, Kuala State College of Technology, and the University of Maduguri, where he obtained a degree in mass communication. He has extensive working experience in all media of mass communication as producer, presenter, media manager, and researcher. He has delivered academic papers in many parts of the world at international conferences, among which, among which includes the Harvard University School of, of Writing, oh, apologies, of Divinity, USA, University of Massachusetts, USA, Brighton Young University, USA. Sheikh Abrahman Ahmad is listed in the Muslim 500, a compendium of 500 most influential Muslims in the world. Currently, he is a member of the Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. He is a member of the Nigeria Interreligious Council, NIREC. Is a member of the Fatwa Committee of the Nigeria Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs. Is currently the national imam and head of Muslim of the uh, and head of mission of the Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, join me as I welcome and hand over the 
uh, mantle of this session to the chairman of the session, Fadila to Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmad. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bihi nasta'in wa sallallahu ala nabiyyi al-kareem wa ala alihi tayyibin al-tahirin wa ashabihi al-ghurri al-mayameen wa alayna ma'ahum ajma'in bimannika allahumma wa karamika wa judika ya akram al-akramin wa ya ajwad al-ajwadin wa ya arham al-rahimin amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Honored scholars, fathers, brothers and sisters in Islam, one more time I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Um, let me join others in welcoming you to this blessed gathering, a blessing, a, a gathering of knowledge, a, a solution-oriented gathering. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless each and every one of us and to reward us most abundantly. May Allah put all of these efforts in the mizan of our good deeds. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. Please let me use this unique opportunity as the chairman of this session to make a few remarks. I'm conscious of the time that we have and I would not like to stand between you and um, the the cocktail of uh, uh, lectures that will not only whet your appetite but will lift your spirit and will calm your nerves. Um, first and foremost, I join others in commending Darun Naim for this initiative. What we have been doing is you know, talking to ourselves, calling to ourselves. We have not been talking to one another. We have not been really, really, our call has not been solution oriented. This is one refreshing approach to da'wah. It is one very innovative. By innovative, I do not mean bid'ah that is reprehensible. I mean something that is approached in a manner that is capable of setting you to think and joining in the army of change. Change for the better, change towards cohesion, change towards sustainability, change towards growth, and change towards the Ridwanullah. The May Allah reward you for all of the expenses and all of the efforts and may it bear very, very uh, 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 good fruits and produce very good results. Secondly, I'd like to commend those who have been attending since this conference started um, more than a week ago. It's indeed a sign of commitment, and I pray that Allah will reward you most abundantly. Um, and finally, yes, this is not supposed to be a talk shop. Aside from the communique that will come at the end of this session, it is also important and imperative to um, introduce a number of things. Number one, there should be a technical session. Papers have been presented. Um, ideas have been, you know, brought and so on and so forth. There should be a technical session that would distill some of these ideas. If possible, publish a pamphlet uh, or even a booklet or even a whole book, you know, to address some of these issues so that those who do not have the opportunity of attending or the opportunity of accessing the session through the social media will have something that they can read. This is consistent with uh, the practice 
of uh, international conferences where they publish um, uh, the papers presented pr probably as a book of reading where contributions of contributors from across the world will not only just sit there but will be published and by the next conference inshallah it will be launched formally that is um you know something that i want us to uh, think about i want us to also think of even if it is a mini um a conference within conference of um you know scholars on one or two issues so that we can say we can tell the world we agreed evidences are, are, are presented and it is cross-checked and this is what has you know been agreed unanimously for the guidance of the people because if um sheikh a has been a part of this conference he has presented papers he has met other shuyukh um, they have uh, done uh, munakasha it may not be her um, and they have come to conclusion it is going to be documented forever even if he's going to change his stand it will be that you once agreed to these it is not to put anybody on the spot but to help the people because at the end of the day the divisions and the disagreements are being helped by the followers not so much by um, you know those who are even propagating it you propagate something if it's not accepted by others and that will be the end of it and finally there is i remember some when we were much younger there was something we call dawa inoculation what is dawa inoculation dawa inoculation is to inoculate the head and the brain and the minds of the awam against viruses you know ideas that have become viruses and that is the source of tremendous trouble for this um, um because uh, I, I think when we get down to the real issues we will be surprised we will be amazed we will be disappointed on you know what people really disagree you, you know it, it has moved from uh, al ikhtilaf to al al al, al firqa and of course people don't even want to distinguish between genuine differences of opinion they think if you don't agree with them that is the end of it people must know the generality of the people must know what are the fundamentals and what are not the fundamentals so that when they hear when they listen to scholars or they read their writings they can be able to discern that well this individual is emphasizing something that is not necessary to be emphasized and i pray allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this easy for us so um i, I think um, the the contributors have been introduced one way or the other and here i would like um, to start with uh, 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 Saada to Professor Ibrahim Olatunde Uthman. If you permit me, sir. Please, there's this protocol that I skipped. I've been reminded. I want to apologize for it and correct it accordingly. Okay, you can monetize the. <laughs> this is Darren Naim. I mean, it's only a matter of naming the prize. Okay. With your... <laughs> if I name it, you pay it. No, Darren Naim. <laughs> okay please go ahead yes uh sincere apologies i skipped the protocol and um i think it turned out to be a blessing because when i was reminded there is somebody among the distinguished personality that had that adds a lot of color to this uh, high table uh, and then within that period while i was reminded with so much emphasis i quickly do uh, an online search and i'm like wow 
it's interesting. So it's somebody that uh, traveled to study business administration, Amadou Bello University, first degree, uh, University of Lagos, master's degree, then did a PhD, then came back to Lagos State University to study law, then to Nigerian law school and became, and across all of that activities, if you look at his profile, his Muslim student society, his activity, this is somebody that has taken the dawah to every nook and cranny till he became a rector of the Lagos State University. Permit me to introduce Dr. Lawal Abdul Aziz, the former rector of the Lagos State Polytechnic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir, for the charity. All right. No, I've not told you that I've done charity. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Um, well, by way of just brief introduction, I dare not um, uh, read the, the CV. Um, Professor Ibrahim Alatunde Uthman, PhD, um, FIPMD. He's a professor in Islamic studies, Islamic feminism. Um, mm, feminism. Really interesting. Islamic law and contemporary Islamic thought in the Department of Arabic and Islamic Studies, University of Ibada. He's a research partner in the Interfaith Dialogue for Peace and National Integration in Nigeria, a national TED Fund sponsored research project. He has served as consultant mapping the global Muslim population, Pew Research Center 2009, visiting lecturer universities, Saint Islam, Malaysia 2010-2011, visiting scholar, University of California, Santa Barbara 2013, uh, sabbatical, National Open University of Nigeria 2015-2016. After having taught at the Department of Islamic Studies, Kogi State University, uh, 2003, International Islamic University in Malaysia, 2005, and Crescent University at Beokuta as pioneering head of the Department of Islamic Religions and General Studies. Chief Imam, a member of the University Senate, 2006 to 2008, among many, many, many others that time will not permit me to read so many it is a whole journal so let me welcome professor ibrahim olatunde uthman um to speak to us 15 minutes in the first instance on bida'a and the challenges of an ikhtilaf wa takfir in the contemporary society which is at the core of this conference. You are most welcome, and you have, strictly speaking, 15 minutes starting from 3.16. By 3.31, you will be done. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alami, wa salatu wa salam ala atamil akhambiyai, wa sayyidin mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ala man kana fi kalbihi miskola dhaagatim min imani wa iksan ila yawmi yubaasun yawma la yanfaw maalun wa la banun illa man ata allaha bi kalbin salim ama baad ayu ala hibba fi allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh The shaman of this session who is also the national chairman, a national missioner of Ansaudin society. May Allah continue to be with you. Permit me, within the time you have given to me, to join others in extending our gratitude and recognition to the Director General of Darun Nahim. Uh, it is my belief, like others have said, that you are really doing a very important work for the Ummah here. And our prayer is that Allah will continue to sustain you and continue to assist you. I also want to thank all those who have spoken in this conference. I've been very fortunate to be here from the very beginning. And I can say without doubt that I've learned a lot, especially from my senior colleagues who are here 
there are many of them I have read their works, but I've never had the opportunity of meeting until I got here. So may Allah continue to be with you all. Without wasting much time, what I've done in this paper is to discuss three major issues in contemporary Islamic work around the world. There is hardly anywhere you want to talk about in the Muslim world today where these issues are not the main issues. They are the issues of Iktilaf, as we have been discussing, the issue of Tefkir, as well as the issue of Bidah. What I try to do in this paper is to look at how these issues have contributed to the fitan in the global Muslim community. In doing so, I try to build my discussion on the works of classical Islamic scholars, what they have said about these issues, and try to see whether in our understanding of these issues at various levels, we are contributing in one way or the other to the fitan in the Muslim community. So to start with, the issue of iktilaf. A lot has been said here today, yesterday, and before yesterday, about the challenge of iktilaf in contemporary Muslim society. In my paper, I explain that the challenges we face come from many angles. We have the discord between members of the Salafia, as it has been mentioned here. But before now, we also have the discord between members of other groups who are not members of the Salafia. For those of us who are leaders in the MSSN, for instance, we will be aware of a time when it was very violent in the MSS. Even to hold a vacation course was a problem. But what we failed to note is that some of these crises boil down to these issues I'm discussing here today. There was a time when even to pray in a mosque, in a mosque was a problem. If you are praying in a mosque of somebody who belonged to the Torekot to Tijaniya, people who are in the Kodriya may come and attack you. They may come and beat you. Both in this part of Nigeria, but most especially in the northern part of Nigeria. So if you want to see all these instances, you go into the paper and you will see it. The first thing that I think is responsible for this is that when we talk about Iktilaf today, we are forgotten that we are talking about Iktilaf al Akwal wal Ara. We are not talking about Iktilaf al Kulub, Iktilaf al Kibla. We forget the fact that as Muslims, we may have divergent of opinions on issues. But that is not taking us away from the same Kibla. One of the examples I've mentioned here that happened before now, during the time of the Salaf, has been mentioned here by many scholars, especially when Sheikh Abdul Wahid Al Ansari was presenting his paper. He made reference to this comment of Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah. But I want to lay emphasis on two aspects of this comment which he never laid emphasis upon. According to Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, he said that the Fukahaw al murijia despite the fact that they are members of the al sunnah wal Jamaa, they differ with us on some matters of accord. To the Jumuhu, as far as when you talk of Iman, Iman must be both Kaulun, Waniya, or Amal. You cannot be a Muslim if you don't have Tesdik Belkalb. And if you don't say it, 
Bilisan. And if you don't have Amal Biljawari, but the Fukaha of the Muridia mainly found among the Anafi school of thought disagree with this definition because to many of them, according to Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah, they believe that when you alter the statement of Iman, it suffices you as a Muslim. But the emphasis I want to lay here is that Sheikh said, Wa in kalu inna imanahum kamil ka iman jibril. It is true that this Fukahaw al Muridia agree with the totality of the Al Sunnah wal Jamaah that if you don't have other aspects of Iman, you are a sinner. They agree. They agree that you are a sinner. And they agree that a sinner may be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in hellfire on the day of judgment. But they say that even that sinner is a Muslim and is Iman layankus wala yazid. Which is contrary to the belief of majority of the Al-Sunnah wal Jama. But Sheikh Ibn said they are among us in the Al-Sunnah wal Jama. This, I think, is a very important point that we must note when we talk about iktilaf in Islam. He went further to say, while talking about these people, that um indali humma alu la ilmi wa din wa li adalam yukafiraad min salaf ahadan. Despite these untranses, nobody among the salaf called any of these scholars to be a kafir. The second example I wanted to mention on the issue of iktilaf, which we tend to forget when we fight and when we label ourselves various names, when we abuse ourselves, is the issue of some punishments in Islam. And here I'm talking about the haddu shatimi rasul. The punishment for somebody who abuses Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Despite the fact that majority of ulama wa al sunnah wal jamaah are of the view that anybody who abuses the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that person should be killed. The punishment of that person is that the person should be killed. It does not matter whether that person is a Muslim or whether that person is is a me the punishment is kill him for abusing the person of salam but we are told that imam abu anifa disagree with this he said yes you may kill a muslim who abuses the prophet salam but the punishment for his emiju is not death penalty but you azza you just give him tazil punishment and nobody among the Salah, because of this, said Imam Abu Hanifa has rejected the Sharia of Allah. And that by that statement, he has gone outside Islam. It never happened. Not even one person uttered this statement. And if you take this argument further, scholars in the Anafi school of thought have explained to us, as explained by Abu Jafar ibn Salama at Tahawi, that the position of Imam Abu Hanifa is the correct position. Because he said, Lihanna an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lam yaktul al Yahuda kolu asamu alayka. That in Medina, Muhammad sallallahu was abused by the Jews. They call him so many names. He never killed a single one of them. There was no instance of one of them that was killed because he abused the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, Imam Ismail Al Yamani Asanayu in his Sharihu of Bulugul Marami tells us, Bal Wale Anna Mahum Alihi Min al Kufuri Hashadu Min Sabi Rasul. That to even be a Kafir is worse than abusing Muhammad Sallam. Because when you look at the Aslu of Kufu, it is abusing Muhammad Sallallahu At the time when Muhammad Sallallahu was sent by Allah to the world, 
Anybody who rejected him was saying, you are a liar, we don't believe you are, you are a prophet of God. So they already abused Muhammad Sallam, in addition to their kufu, but they were not killed. So this is a point I want us to go back to when we are discussing the fitan in the Muslim community. The second point I quickly want to call our attention to when we talk about the issue of kufu is that during the time of the Salaf, it is not that people rejected completely some issues in Islam today on the basis of which we declare a lot of people to be not to, to, to be muktedudun that they have gone outside Islam. For instance, the issue of Ta'awil. The issue of Ta'awil. On the basis of Ta'awil, a lot of Muslims have been declared as Kufa. Because we disagree with our understanding of Nususu as Sariha. Inma fil Quran of Sunnah. On that basis, we call them Kufa. But Aslan, these people are not rejecting these Nusus. What they do is that they have different understanding with us, with this Nusus. And Imam Shatibi in Kitabu Lektisom, because that's where I want to end my discussion in the third part when I talk about Bidya. He talks a lot about all these issues. In one of his explanations, he tells us, and this is the verse we always cite among others, that verse in Ali Imran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that in the Quran, we have the muhkam and we have the mutashabi. And the muhkam is ummul kitab. The understanding of the Salaf is that to understand the mutashabi in Islam, we must place it on the understanding of the muhkam. But a lot of people who commit bidai today, they reject that method. Rather than using that method, what they do is to use their own ta'awin. And they come up with interpretation different with some of the interpretation of the Salah. On this basis, do we say that they are kufa? I don't think so. Ibn Habas, what they allow ta'ala, Ani, we were told when he was interpreting this verse, we know that this verse has karatein. It is either you say that when Allah say nobody knows the meaning of the mutashabi'at in the Quran except Allah. Some people say that is where I stop. Those who are sound and deep in knowledge, those who have the capacity of doing ishti'ad, they say we believe in mutashabi'at, we don't interpret it. But Ibn Abbas said, Anna Mina Rasekin. I am one of those people. I understand the meaning of this. I understand the meaning of the Mutashabiat. So which means this Mutashabiat can be interpreted by people who are qualified to do so. This is what leads me to the issue of Bida. You see, when we discuss Bidia today. The impression we usually get is that kulu bidi atin dolala wa kulu dolala finna. I think we are not getting the point. My, under, my understanding of reading the works of all the great scholars of Islam is that bid'a in Islam is to establish and had and hard for new things that, are, that can come into Islam. It is not to say that new things cannot come. But Bidya is to set a limit to the new thing that can come into Islam. What do I mean? In the sense that all the scholars of Islam, whether Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, or Imam Idris al-Shafi, or Ibn Taymiyyah, or Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi, they are all agreed. They are all agreed on the fact that anything that is new in this religion that has no aslu, that has no aslu in the Kitab wa Sunnah should be rejected. They are all agreed. They are all agreed. 
But where they disagree is whether whatever is new that has no aslu, do we call it Bidiatu and Asana, like some scholars have done, Ibn Ajah al Askolani, Muhammad Idris Ashafi, or do we say this comes under Mosolihu al Morisala, like Abu Isaac Ashati be as mentioned? So it may not be that it is correct based on these views of these Islamic scholars to say that everything that is new is not accepted in this day. But what we are all saying is khilafu lafziyu. Laysa iktilafu iktikodi. It's iktilafu lafziyu. Somebody said this is bidah to asana. Another person said this is not asana, but this is maslaha alihumma. And we have basis for maslaha alihumma. So, my conclusion in this paper is that our understanding of these three key issues is contributing to the division of the ummah in ways that when they start, we will not be able to stop them. Remembering the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wataku fitnatan la tusibannan dolamu minkum khaso to avoid fitna is to prevent it from germinating. Once it germinates, we may not be able to control the dimensions. And to stop it from germinating, we must accept that based on the understanding of the Salafu Soli, anybody that is a member of the al sunnah wal Jamaa, we do not exclude them from this faith because of Khilafu, Lafziyun, as it has been mentioned here yesterday, and some other forms of Iktilaf that occurs among us. I put up a last one. Thank, you. Like I Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I have deliberately added about five minutes so that you will be able to have a soft landing. Jazakallah khair. Um, well, um, I don't want to break the flow. Um, we will come back to do a recap. Uh, let me just go straight. Uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Qamruddin is around. Okay, we are going to uh, take him on right now. Um, Sheikh uh, Qamruddin Bello uh, was born in Oyo. Oyo Alafi. Mm, Oyo is a Omenica in Oyo State. He completed his primary and secondary education at AUD. So he's our son and he's our product. And Saruddin. Okay? So, Alagma and Ladibul Grammar School, uh, both in Oyo. He went to the Polytechnic Ibada and Federal University of Technology, Akure. We obtained his uh, OND and Bachelor of Technology, BTEC, in Science Laboratory Technology and Industrial Mathematics, respectively, um, in 1986 and 1995. He then proceeded to the Obafemi Awolo University, Ileife, for a postgraduate diploma in Computer Science, which he obtained in the year 2000. He also obtained a postgraduate diploma in education at the Adekule Adjusting University at Kungba in 2009. He proceeded to pursue a Master of Education in Science Education at the, university, at the same university. Um, Sheikh Kamaldin started his Arabic and Islamic education at Oyo under three different teachers, which is included his uh, father, Sheikh Jibril Bello. He completed the study of seven different books of language, fiqh, and you know, under the tutelage of Sheikh Uthman Busairi at Oyo. When at the university, he was under the tutelage of Sheikh 
Abbas Abu Bakar, the present chief imam of um, Ikare Akokuin Ondo State, uh, who is also a graduate of Osul from the Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University in Saudi Arabia, from, him, from whom he learned Tajweed, Nah, and Surf, um, and so on and so forth. Um, it's also a whole epistle. I don't want to uh, take your time because I'm aware that we have been up since morning. Our bodies need rest. Our stomach needs to be placated. Uh, it's rumbling and grumbling and complaining. Soon we are going to have all of that. I, wait, I welcome Sheikh Kamardin uh, Ballo who will talk to us about differences, its types and forms, and how to maintain the middle cause, um, al-wasatiyya. Um, Faliyatafaddal, mashkuran minna wa mahjuran min Allah. Alhamdulillahi wali salihin, ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على خير الأنام محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وسائر مسلمين إلى أن تقوم الساعة أما بعد عبد كلامي بما بدا به صالح اقول السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته the title of the paper as mentioned is differences in types and forms threading the middle course i would like to read the summary of the paper then proceed to the paper this research contains the fact that differences really means opposition why ikhtilaf means the disagreement on a particular matter and both times can be used interchangeably among the jurists it refers to any issue on which there is no consensus moreover differences in opinion is natural and preordained the researcher have attempted to explain the types and forms of differences in order to call the attention to differentiate between permissible differences and the impermissible ones, so as to warn from falling into the impermissible differences. Thereafter, we briefly explained the causes of permissible differences and highlighted 11 of it. Then we mentioned our obligations towards permissible differences concerning issues of disagreement among the scholars. The impermissible differences was afterwards explained with its types, forms, and causes. Towards resolving the problem of differences, we presented seven stepwise approaches to deal with matters of differences and eight etiquettes of disagreement, wherein dialogue was posited as an essential tool of resolving differences. Finally, we briefly looked into the negative effects of internet and social media on differences and how the social media could be positively used to resolve disagreements. In an era where Muslims, both learned and uneducated, malign one another, accuse one another of innovations, conceitedness, extremism, and infidelity as a result of differences of opinion, permissible and otherwise leading to enmity, hostility, and chaos, culminating into fighting, bloodshed, and eventually war, then there is a cause for alarm. The people look at the literal meaning and technical meaning of differences that people have elucidated in their paper. Then the types of differences are two, according to the paper. They are ikhtilafu tanawur wa ikhtilafu tudot. That is variegated differences and contradictory differences. The variegated differences that ikhtilafu tanawur is a type of difference 
we are by none of the different statements or views contradicts one another or rather all the statements or views are correct and examples are about five and i'm going to mention two different forms of recitation of the quran well known among the scholars and students of knowledge the messenger of allah said the quran has been revealed in seven different ways so recite in the way that is easier for you the second one is the different authentic remembrance of allah al adkar al mathurat like the morning and evening adkar these are two types that we mentioned under variegated differences we proceeded to note two things one that it is not permissible to prefer collective obligations or responsibility to individual obligations or responsibility nor to jettison or dump an obligatory act for a voluntary supererogatory one like the hadith of the mention uh, of the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had this kudusi that we know um the second point is it is essential for students of knowledge including the generality of the muslims to learn of their region what a muslim has no excuse of its ignorance pertaining to the understanding of his religion creed and purification of soul for example the pursuit of memorization of the quran in its various authentic forms or the study of hadith and its science should not be a cause of ignorant ignorance about aqida or the jurisprudence of halal and haram and similar things in the religion the second type of difference is contradictory differences to that. this is a type of difference we are by all of these different statements or views of the disagreeing persons contradict one another thus each of them ruling that the other is either in error of commission or omission on the basis of his judgment the authorities for this definition are there in the paper in the references the contradictory differences are of two types the first one is permissible or tolerant uh, tolerable difference yani ikhtilaf sa'ik or ikhtilaf sa'ik then the other one is impermissible one which is al khilaf ladi lam yumkinu al khilaf fi sa'igon the permissible difference is, is a type of difference that do not contradict any text of the quran or sunnah nor does it contradict a known consensus among the scholars or an intelligible analogy al -Qiyas. whether from the aspect of the akida or from the aspect of jurisprudence sheikh islam nutemi i mentioned this when he was commenting on surah 21 ayah 78 to 79 when allah said we guided that is um remember when Dawood and Suleiman passed judgment regarding the crops ruined at night by some sheep and we were witness to their judgments we guided Suleiman to a fairer settlement and granted each of them wisdom and knowledge prophet Dawood and his son Suleiman on the same issue gave different judgment Allah said Suleiman gave fairer judgment but Dawood we have bestowed with wisdom therefore in that ayah none of them have been condemned allah knows best causes of permissible differences um we mentioned some of the causes uh, one and the references for them are there like the one mentioned by sheikh uh, ibn al-uthaymin rahimahullah rahmatawazi in his book and the khilaf bain al-ulama he said one the evidence either the evidence has not reached the one who differs or committed error in his ruling or the evidence got to him in a manner of which he is not sure thus making his mind not to be addressed with such evidence it occurs among the scholars 
somebody will think that a scholar have not seen a nurse a test but he has seen it but the scholar is in doubt about the authenticity of it like the issue of is it compulsory incumbent to say bismillah at the beginning of wudu imam shafi rahimahullah did not see it as being compulsory but others have said it's compulsory because the hadith that mentioned that you don't start your wudu with bismillah they said it's authentic but to him then is in doubt about the authenticity of that hadith therefore is ruling divas from those who have seen the hadith as being authentic so if anybody understand that one there will be no problem like it's happening today perhaps there are some hadiths in the past that we have used that some scholars who are mutakhossisun specialists in the field of hadith are telling us today that they are not authentic therefore our rulings on such issues today we differ from our rulings on so the same issue yesterday there is a anyway because of time let me proceed then our obligation towards permissible differences three the scholars it is upon its obligation upon them the responsibility of research evidence gathering and the revision of rulings and issuance of islamic edit they should not because of fear of uh, differences not issue fatwa that is their responsibility then the students of knowledge st should study the work of the scholars and guide the ummah why the third people group of people are the unlearned one they should ask the scholars or students of knowledge that they have studied that such uh, scholars and uh, students of knowledge are god-fearing ethical and they have self refrain then we go to in impermissible differences uh, there are types of impermissible differences one differences in matters of akida and actions and they are in different forms that you have mentioned and i will mention just one non-declaration of adherence of other religion other than islam as unbelievers if somebody refuses or he refuses to acknowledge the fact that anybody who do not believe in la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah as an infidel then is different even if he's a muslim or a scholar is not allowable and we have people like that who says that today i remember in Ibadan, islamic caring and sharing center then i was at the university in futa we sent some delegates to the man who do help the christian to even distribute their pamphlet and when our representative got to him he said we have not completed our sunnah it remains for us to do is isra wali mi'raj didn't the prophet did do during his time isra wali mi'raj we say he did then, then you should emulate the prophet in this sunnah so go and complete your sunnah before you can call me to what you are seeing so that one is not permissible and we were very happy in Oyo State, then the Tijaniya, in a year of program, Dr. Adikulikun came out that clearly this man is not a member of Tori Kotu Tijaniya and he was rejected. Then we proceeded in the paper to mention that under this type of uh, non permissible khilaf, it's not only in Akida is in other aspect of the religion then you can go there and read it then causes of impermissible difference the first one is self-deceit which can lead to arrogance and self-aggrandishment then having bad opinion about others killer to the enemy which is insufficient knowledge and what we call blind followership Nam. The stepwise approach to dealing with matters of differences being on clear knowledge. It has been mentioned and enumerated by scholars who have presented their paper. Therefore, I'm not going to deal with that. And etiquette of disagreement. I'm not going to talk about that too. 
because it has been eliminated. Then the social media and khilaf. I want to mention a point here. with statistic. It is said that in total, the number of people that own a smart and official phone is 7.26 billion today, making up 90.72% of the world population. They are holding phone, whether smart or not smart. Therefore, we said here that there is danger if the scholars do not wake from, I'm sorry, their slumber in court about the use of social media. Because of this danger, one, the enemy of Islam among the atheists, fintikas, and secularists, and hypocrites can disguise as scholars of the deen in social media, spreading mischief in the ummah, using calculated attempt to create doubt in the minds of innocent Muslims who are eager to learn about their religion. Such enemies of Islam mentioned above can create hatred of the real scholars in the mind of the unwary. Recently, somebody showed me something on, 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 on social media. Why somebody was telling people that the scholars have done zulm. They have been dishonest to the human by not telling them that dog is permissible to be eaten. He was cutting the eye of the Quran and he concluded that all, he mentioned all, I listened to it, I watched it, that the scholars have not been truthful to the woman. And we mentioned way out. And uh, in our, um, what do you call it, recommendations, I mentioned five recommendations here, and I want to mention the last two. The, there should be a senior scholar committee to look into issues of differences emanating from the social media and communicate to the government and the generality of the Muslim the position of Sharia and invariably the stand of the scholars on such issues that could cause chaos in order to nip it in the bud. So the government should be involved with the issue of senior scholar committee. I had to keep it already, my that has been mentioned and suggested here. Such as it is the government that will use the power of governance to nip such people in the bud because government itself wants peace and we are to sensitize the government that these are the people that can cause problems like the issue of Boko Haram may not. Finally, the proposed senior scholar committee should regulate the appointment of imams and callers through education and certification such that an uncertified person by the commission, committee shall no more be appointed as imams and scholars. This is very important. You might not know it in some of the areas where there are no many, there are many scholars. But in some areas, you see a student who have read only the Quran and perhaps uh, what we call um, Fawaki Usakito, becoming the chief imam of a town and be appointed as the mufti of the town. And people will now conclude that is more knowledgeable than somebody who is a khiriji of a jamia. It happens. I see it where I am, where I live. People told me, somebody who is a graduate of jamia, imam, imam laka. Somebody who finished Sanawi from Ilori. And I know it does not know the usul. Uh, why, why are you learning? Not for you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so your time is I'm off. sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for mentioning that, for mentioning that. You know, in any, case, really. in any case, your time is off. Uh, yes. <laughs> you can see me. You can see me packing my paper. I'm sorry for mentioning the name. But you should pardon me because most of us are our knowledge essentially the root is from Elohim. There is no way we are not going to be mentioning it. It's just like in the past when we used to think there is no Aousa man that can drink, that can consume intoxicants. So, may Almighty Allah guide us right. From there, finally, I have to thank the Darun Naim for extending their invitation to us. This man being far away from... If you spend because, one more minute, okay, thank you very much. I will much. find you. <laughs> Okay. May Allah swear no matter what. Yes, like Allah. Karen. Um, you can mention it, Lonnie. Don't worry. I won't stop you again. Um, 
is uh, Dr. Rajab Latif here now? Yes. Represented? Niabatan? So, who is the representative? Bismillah Faddal. Um, so, Dr. Raji Abdel Latif. Um, studied sociology at the University of Villari um, 2004-2007 again University of Villari 2009-2011 again University of Villari 2012-2018 ah is a um, is uh, Dr. Raji from Illinois? No. Okay, we have given him citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> so, he has PhD in sociology, MSc in sociology, and uh, the first degree in sociology. Um, well, uh, not much is here, but I think that um, it is not so much what you have written on paper. It is what you are able to uh, deliver. So I invite the representative of Dr. Raji Abdul Latif, who uh, was tutored in Ilori all through, but is not claiming Ilori citizenship, even though we have dashed him, to please go ahead. Mahali Ashik Alexad Al Fodil, Dr. Adraman Ahmad, Akramakumullah. On behalf of the of Dr. Abdelati Fawji, the HOD Department of Sociology, Faculty of Social Science, University of Illinois. I'm here to present his paper. And my name is Mutado Musa Akulide from the University of Lagos. Uh, guidance and counseling, first degree and masters from the University of Lagos. Uh, sorry, I forgot to tell you, you have 15 minutes. I'm going to stop at exactly quarter past four. Now, so don't say because you are wearing the same uh, color of dress with Professor Akuyidi, I will not stop you. Uh, allow me to follow the existing protocol. Alhamdulillah, in the shaitan rajim, bismillah, rahman, rahim. Alhamdulillah, in the tafarrada, bil jalala, tibi anid. Wa in the taqassus, bil anzi, la ali, bil adid. In the anzi, agna, ana, la hamdi, wa laukafa. كما تعالى أن الشكر وإن وفى والذي صلى على نبيه المصطفى ووعد بالجنة الذين اصطفى والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين سيدنا وعبي بنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى أهله على خيار وصحابه الذين شابتين ومن تبعهم بالإسان إلى يومتين آمين All praises, thanks, glorification and adoration are due to Almighty Allah the Lord of the world the creator and the originator of the universe, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, and all-present God. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Almighty Allah. Almighty Allah is the first. Almighty Allah is the last. Almighty Allah is the beginning. Almighty Allah is the end. Allah is the beginning without a starting point. And Allah is the end without a point of termination. I call it bear witness that our leader, Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can it be louder than that? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was born on Monday, called to Prophet Ud on Monday, migrated to Medina on Monday, and died on Monday. May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his household, his companions, and the generality of the Muslims to the day of judgment. Once again, I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once again, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Uh, I will
would like to give due to the time given to me i would like to give the summary of the paper before me here i will first give out the outline then mention uh some topics the paper has been made available for darul naim by the lecturer and i believe that it can reach every one of us through the uh, management of darul naim darul naim ilal imam inshallah i acknowledge you i appreciate you i pray to allah to continue to support and be with darul naim and all our lovers of darul naim let's say amen now the paper before me here is tied to managing religious divergences the role of internal conditions that is the topic of the paper the summary of the paper is given below number one naturality of internal religious differences number two causes of differences among scholars number three the role of internal conditions in managing religious divergences the last one is conclusion so inshallah i will read through the paper as uh, possible the first apart from the introduction to the paper the first topic discussed is causes of differences among scholars naturality of interreligious differences it is natural that people display differences of opinion due to their inherent different characters way of thinking and understanding which affects people's perceptions and judgment of things thus it is humane to think or see things differently not only in religious matter but also in mundane affairs this has been well stated in the holy quran in the statement of allah that says wala usha arab book la ja'ala nasa nasa umatan wa'ida wala yazaluna muktalifina illa man rahima rabbuk walizalika kalakohum this a this is a reference from the holy quran that it is born that we have differences among us we are not from the same town we are not from the same place so we have individual differences that is why it is born that we have differences in our opinions even in the matter related to religion practices during the time of prophet muhammad i would like to butcher this with what happened during the time of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there are so many differences that occurred during the time of prophet muhammad among the companions of the prophet and this did not cause any disunity or any enmity among the companions of the prophet one example was during the time of a uh, battle of trench when prophet muhammad sallam ordered companions to ensure that they observe their salat al asr in the quarters of bani quraizo when the companions were going to the quarters of bani quraizo some discovered that it is time for asr prayer they said they don't want the time of asr prayer to expire thereby they observe their asri prayer at the right time the other companions head to the directive of the prophet muhammad sallam that you must observe the prayer at the quarters of bani kuraizo so they proceeded in their journey they go to the quarters of bani kuraizo but the time of asri prayer has gone then they observe their asri prayer so after the journey they reported the case to prophet muhammad 
and the prophet and Sam did not blame any of the two groups because each of the group carried out the action based on their interpretation and understanding of the hadith of the prophet Muhammad so that is one of the justifications that we are bound to have different opinion even on the issues relating to religion affairs now causes of differences among scholars i've just taken one out of the uh the naturality of the interreligious differences during the now i want to take the causes of differences among the scholars there are different opinions among the scholars among the muslim scholars due to the following causes one defining on the authenticity of the evidence of the textual evidence available to to them there are some reasons there are some causes that can lead to having different opinions among the scholars deciding the authenticity of text varies sometimes and is open to independent intellectual reasoning that are not always uniform a secular may hold a scholar may hold a particular traditions as sound and authentic as against another scholar who hold the tradition is not authentic in some cases some scholars may work on particular ideas of the prophet based on their knowledge that the ideas is authentic while some other scholars will not work on their ideas this case can be found in the school of thought of imam shafi'i and imam maliki the shafi'i school of thought believe that at this mostal can be used to pass judgment why the maliki school of thought disagree and claim that they are at this at this mostal cannot be used and despite this the both the school of thought maintain unity and peace among themselves nobody no 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 party criticize the other party because of this so then another reason for the for this problem is that difference on some juristic principle and sources of evidence some scholars may differ on the sources of evidence available to them while passing judgment on a particular issue and this does not necessitate abusing or criticizing one another because the source of Hadith, I believe that the source of Hadith I'm using is authentic. I said the source is not authentic. Another one is, let me quickly go to the uh, things to do the the role of internal conditions in managing religious divergences so if we have established the fact that internal disagreement will happen is bound to occur among the scholars what are the things what are the mechanisms to be put on place in order to curb these uh, divergent opinions number one the first one is humility and respect and reciprocal respect we should try to be humble whenever we are presenting our opinion we should not see our opinion to be the most superior and the most authentic so we will be humble we should not abuse the other scholars or claim that we have the authority over them because some people today 
come to the they go online they go to it uh, they go to social media to, to claim to be big shake to let people know them in order for them to gain worldly materials not because of the deal the knowledge they claim they have or they are displaying is for the purpose of Ria in order to let people know that I'm a scholar this is not a, this person is not a scholar and Prophet Muhammad Sallam has warned us against this Kala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Man ta'allama li ilma li yubayi bihi ulama'a ayumari bihi sufa'a aw yasruf bihi uju anas ilayhi adhkalahu Allahu jahannam that whoever claim to possess knowledge and this knowledge is using it to deceive to deceive people or to claim authority upon people or to take some people as these people are ignorant and i have i have a, a authority over them allah is going to put that person in the jahannam in the day of judgment so we have to checkmate ourselves to check our intention to know the purpose of dawah that we claim to propagate that is number one another one is bigot to avoid bigotry and intolerance today many people believe that whatever they say nobody has anything to say about it they believe that no matter how researchable you are if they say anything whatever they say is final and they may not have proof uh one of the scholars says i am a yadain lele ilmi ma'arifatan arofta shayan wagabat anka le ashia if you claim to be a scholar you have limited knowledge it is only what you you know is what you know many people know many other things that you don't know we can see this case in the history of our prophet musa and khidir in surah al kaf that prophet musa claimed to have knowledge but almighty allah showed him and told him to let him know that he has limited knowledge the only quran says if you claim that you know something know that there are so many other scholars that are far better than you do then another thing to checkmate these uh these differences I'm, I'm among so, us i'm very sorry i don't like to checkmate you but the time is up now nah. so i i will give you one minute to complete your thoughts nah. Alhamdulillah. In conclusion, religious divergence is natural phenomena that cannot be cannot be ruled out in Islam. Only that it is effect on Muslim Ummah is not only uh, what it is effect on Muslim Ummah is very great. So this paper admonished all the dais, all the du'a, the imam and the scholars, not to see ourselves, our, our opinion, to be superior to the others, Ex uh, uh, except that we have clear evidence from the Quran, the Sunnah, the Ijma, and the Qiyas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you most abundantly. Brothers and sisters in Allah's deen, these had been the presentations. But I have a very big dilemma in front of me. As a student of communications, there are things they call nonverbal cues. 
and the non-verbal cues that I get from the audience, the feedback that I get is we're tired. Please let us go. I think I'm right. Even though if you don't say it, I can read it. So as much as I would love a very robust interaction after the paper presentations, I am limited by time and the circumstance. So I will just appeal to our teachers and um, honorable members of the high table for just one or two intervention. There is no way we will not allow you to ask a few questions. Uh, we'll take a few, one or so comment here, one or two from the floor, and we'll take questions. And then the, uh, our, our lecturers, our speakers, can respond to some of those questions. But the rule is please don't ask a question that had already been answered or a question that someone else had asked. Ask question, don't run commentary. Don't give another lecture. Otherwise, I'll be at liberty to stop you. I would not like to do that, but I'll, co I'll be compelled to do that. So let's start from here. Uh, I don't know whether a professor would like to uh, make intervention and maybe just one or two on the high table um, if there is uh, any other person who wants to make intervention I will permit otherwise we'll just go to the uh, higher table on the floor Professor Otuyo uh, Dr. Uh, Ariabi uh, I can take one more after the two of them. Okay, I will take you. Just the three. Please make it very brief, very precise, and to the point. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, let me firstly comment our teachers, those who presented their papers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. My uh, suggestion is that I think we need to what is called Ministry of uh, or Minister of Islamic Affairs or Minister of uh, Islamic Religious. Alhamdulillah, here we have one for our brother from Mali who is a minister of religious and also another country even in Guinea Guinea it's not like Nigeria they have also minister of uh, religious I think in Nigeria here we need and I want to use this opportunity for those who are hearing me and uh, our father Aidan Imam and Saruddin please we need to talk to the government but now we are in need urgently to appoint someone to be a minister of uh, religions because all of these differences we try to regulate it and uh, some problems about the imam you can see imam who cannot read surah al fatiha and he will be appointed as imam our mufti we are we know what is going now in our social media this one will be a mufti we talk about Islam in ignorance. So I think this some, the thing that can be a solution uh, to, con to conquer this problem is to have someone who is called Minister of uh, Islamic Religious. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Dr. Ariadi. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Uh, may Allah be pleased with our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
uh, permit me to stand on the existing protocol in order to keep to the time given to me. I just want to add to what all our presenters, our professors, our leaders have said. You see, the naturality of uh, differences, disagreement, we all agree. But I think we need to sound a caution. A caution because one of the causes of this, Ikhtilaf, Khilaf, even the Bidya, our respected the professor has spoken about is the idea of some people who believe when we talk about Sahaba, they will say, Hum rijal wa nahnu rijal. They were authority and we are authority. I can't imagine somebody of this era comparing his own uh, educational standard or whatever to the Sahaba. We have to be very careful so that we don't open a gate for fitness that will not be able to manage. Yes, we agree. It is natural to disagree. I want to round up this contribution by citing what happened between Sayyidina Umar anhu and Abdullah ibn Abbas. Sayyidina Umar was personally thinking and was wondering within himself that what could have made this Ummah, I mean, separated later. He said, كيف تختلف هذه الأمة ونبيها واحد وكبلتها واحدة I can't imagine to cut the long story short he invited Abdullah ibn Umar Abdullah ibn Abbas and he asked him the same question how do you think what could, what, what could be later what could be the, 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 the causes of disunity for this Ummah I want to rest the case there Abdullah ibn Abbas replied him he said Inama unzil al Quran wa alin wa karaana wa alimna fima nuzila. Quran is being revealed to us. We read it. We know the reasons as Babu Nuzul why a specific ayah was being revealed. Sayati badana akwamun. Some people will come after us. Some generations will come. La yadruna fima nuzila. They will not even bother to know why it was refilled. So everybody will just stand up and say whatever he wants. So if everybody is now assuming that this is how it should be, this is my, according to my own understanding, neglecting the understanding of Sahaba, they will be disagreeing. When they start to disagree, they will be fighting. So this is just it. We just have to take it, even the Bidya or whatever we are discussing, we take it to our predecessors, take the Sahaba as the authority, Quran, Sunnah, and the stance of the Sahaba. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. We take the last. We will come back. Just we will take him and uh, afterwards, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me stand on the existing protocol. Yeah, I would just like to add to what Dr. Riyaji have just said now. But I just want to look from the angle of issues that cause differences sometimes cause fights between Muslims. I think most of these issues are Masail Fikriya. But here we tend to treat them as Masail Akadiya. So the issue now is some of Masail issues of Fikri, issues of jurisprudence have been taken to be issues of Akida. So that is the reason why we find ourselves in the lens whereby some people will be telling you that other kafir other mubtali on the issues that are jurisprudence and uh, jurisprudence in, in, in the, uh, as the, the, and the, on the origin so we need to take this aspect very serious to distinguish between issues of aqidah and issues of jurisprudence thank you thank so you much. very much we'll just take one more contributions uh, after that those of us who are uh, residents will go and say our Salat al Ast and will return to read the communique. 
Um, so, Bismillah, Fadl. السلام عليكم شكرا لمدير الجلسة شكرا لأخوان الكرام سوف تكون لدي ثلاث نقاط بالعربية وأقترح أن تساعدني في ترجمتها للأخوة وأعتقد أنها نقاط مهمة جدا أولا فيما يتعلق بمداخلة الدكتور حول ساب الجناب صحيح أن ثمة تفاصيل دقيقة في سب الجناب لكن من هذه المنصة عند ضرب الأمثلة نقترح أنا والدكتور بلال استبعادها لأن فيها تفاصيل دقيقة ولأنكم في بلد يوجد فيه مسيحيون لا نريد أن يتسرب أي شيء حول الخلاف حول سب الجناب النبوي لأننا نريد أن يكون رأينا في هذا الأمر واحدا أنه لا يعفى ولا يسامح من سب الجناب النبوي ولو وجد في تراثنا الفقهي ما يخالف ذلك أو ما هو استثناءات من ذلك أن النقطة الثانية أيها الإخوة الكرام أنا لم أنا نسيت أن أشير إلى مسألة أن ثمة إجماعات متأخرة سبقتها أو ما يشبه الإجماعات المتأخرة مراعاة للأصوليين أقول هذا سبقها خلاف ولكن هذه أيضا ينبغي أن لا نختلف عليها مثل الإجماعات المتأخرة مثلا مثال الإجماع على تحريم الكوكايين قبل ذلك كان يستخدم في العلاج أحيانا الآن أجمع على أنه سم وهكذا فإذا حصل إجماع متأخر من قبل هيئات ومتخصصين ووافق عليه الفقهاء فنجعله إجماعا لا نختلف عليه مثل الإجماع مثلا على جواز السفر للحج بالطائرة كان سابقا في خلاف بين بعض العلم قالوا إن فيه تغرير, تغرير بالنفس وقالوا إن فيه أيضا تركا للصلاة ومع فقد الطهورين فلا يعذر بترك فرض لأجل إقامة فرض قال بعضهم هذا وكان ثمة خلاف مثلا في تزكية النقود الورقية هل تجب فيها الزكاة أم لا وارتفع الخلاف فمثل هذه الأمور يحتاج أن يوصى بأنها لا يختلف فيها لأن الخلاف فيها لا فائدة من رأيه أما الاقتراح المهم والأخير بالنسبة إلي وهو قد يكون خارجا عن موضوع المؤتمر وقد تداولته مع الدكتور عبد المؤمن وبعض الإخوة أني أقترح أن تكون ثمة في نيجيريا رابطة لعلماء اللغة النيجيريين رابطة لعلماء اللغة العربية لعلماء العربية النيجيريين لأنه هذا سوف يحمي اللغة العربية في نيجيريا وأفريقيا وسيحمي إنجازاتكم وسيساعد على نقلها إلى الأجيال المقبلة وشكراً So, uh, inshallah, I think we'll break now to pray Salatul Ashr in the next um, five minutes, ten minutes. Those of us who, are, who have done Jama should please be seated. Uh, we will go and pray Salatul Ashr now. While we are praying Salatul Ashr, those who have the communication should get it ready. When we return, I will allow each of the speakers three, three minutes. Assalamu alaikum. I will allow each of the speakers three, three minutes to wrap up their thoughts. And after which, we are going to take the communique. Insha'Allah al-Kareem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.